Welcome to a Lean Stacks instructional video. This video is part of the Spring Boot Fundamentals series. In this video, we build upon the Greeting Web Services project, introducing production monitoring and management features with Spring Boot Actuator. The Actuator suite offers out of the box capabilities such as health checks, metrics, application information, traces, shutdown, and more. In most instances, instances, these features may be customized, secured, or disabled using simple application configuration changes. Let's get started. I've opened the project in the Spring Tool Suite. Open the Maven POM file. We need to add the Spring Boot Starter dependency for the Actuator component. The next time we run the project, Spring Boot will automatically configure the actuator component with sensible default values. Let's run the application to see actuators out of the box functionality. Open a terminal window and change directory to the project base directory. Type MVN Spring Boot Run and press enter to start the embedded Apache Tomcat web server on port 8080. Actuator exposes several web service endpoints. I'll use my RESTful web service client to demonstrate each of their out of the box capabilities. Actuator endpoints may be grouped into a few categories. The first category is configuration. The auto config endpoint returns Spring Boot automatic configuration information. The Beans endpoint returns information about Beans configured in Spring's application context. The config props endpoint returns information about all at configuration properties annotated values. The ENV or environment endpoint returns all environment configuration values from all sources such as environment variables, command line arguments, and properties files. It also provides a list of active spring profiles. The mappings endpoint returns a list of all request mapping paths. The info endpoint returns customizable static application descriptive information. We'll learn more about this later. The second category of actuator web service endpoints provide runtime or diagnostic information. The dump endpoint returns a thread dump from the application. The health endpoint returns health check information. The health check automatically assesses the health of critical application dependencies such as database and messaging systems. The metrics endpoint returns a report of application transaction volume and statuses. It provides the ability to assess application load statistics and is useful if creating an operational dashboard. The trace endpoint returns detailed trace information for the most recent transactions. The third and final category of actuator web service endpoints provides operational management functionality. The shutdown endpoint gracefully shuts down the application. This endpoint is not enabled by default. As you have seen, the out-of-the-box capabilities of actuator are very powerful. Many of you have probably created similar features for your applications by hand. Unfortunately, this custom code becomes part of the application that you have to maintain, which takes resources away from creating and maintaining application features. Using Actuator virtually eliminates the need to create custom operational monitoring capabilities in your application. Now let's learn how to customize the Actuator endpoints. Each endpoint may be customized in three basic ways using the application properties files. Endpoint properties have a specific format. 
the word endpoints followed by a period, and then the endpoint name like shutdown followed by another period. The third node of the property may be ID, sensitive, or enabled. The ID property allows you to change the name of the endpoint and the context path to which it is mapped. Let's add a property value for the health service, changing its ID to status. The sensitive property indicates if endpoint access is secured by Spring Security or if it's public. All endpoints except health and info are secured out of the box. The enabled property indicates if the endpoint is turned on or off. By default, all endpoints are enabled except for the shutdown endpoint. The next time we run the application, the health endpoint will be renamed to status and will provide more detailed information because the security requirement is disabled. Also, the shutdown endpoint will be enabled and the security requirement for it will be disabled. Obviously, in a real-world scenario, we would strengthen the security for these endpoints rather than weaken them. This example is meant to illustrate the configuration properties for each actuator endpoint. Before we run the application, there's one more actuator configuration property which is important to learn to further protect the endpoints. If you recall when I last demonstrated the actuator endpoints, they were all accessed at the root context path. It's possible that a malicious party may try to attack your system using these default actuator endpoint paths. You may provide a context path at which all actuator endpoints are located. Use the management context path property to change the actuator web service endpoint context path. This path may be as deep as you wish. Let's run the application once again to see the impact of these changes we've made. Open a terminal window and change directory to the project base directory. Type MVN Spring Boot Run and press enter to start the embedded Apache Tomcat web server. Notice that the web services are no longer available at the base context path. Now I must prefix them with actuators. Let's test the health check service. It's no longer available at slash health or even at slash actuators slash health. It is available at slash actuators slash status because we set the value of its ID property to status. Notice also that it provides additional health check information because we set the sensitive property to false. Next, let's test the shutdown endpoint. The application returns a status of 405 because the shutdown actuator endpoint is not available for HTTP GET requests. It responds only to POST requests. This time the application is gracefully stopped. Since this endpoint halts the application, that's why it's disabled by default, and when enabled, it requires authentication by default. The out-of-the-box unsecured health check provides a basic application status indicator. When secured, the health check provides additional information, such as data source and messaging component statuses. It's also possible to create custom health checks by implementing the health in indicator interface. To illustrate this, let's create a custom health indicator which returns a status of up as long as there is at least one greeting in the database. Otherwise, it will return the status of down. For either status, the health indicator also returns a count attribute indicating the total number of greeting entities in the database. In the source main Java directory, create a new package named org example ws actuator health. In that package, create a new class named greeting health indicator, which implements the health indicator interface. Begin by annotating the class with the component annotation. 
so that the so that Spring's component scanner will automatically register this class as a beam when the application is started. Use the auto-wired annotation to inject an instance of the greeting service. Now let's create the logic in the health method. The actuator health web service executes the health method of all registered health indicator beans. The method returns an instance of the health class, which contains the status and any attributes resulting from the health indicator's checks. In our health method, let's retrieve all greeting entities and determine the size of the collection. If the collection is null or the size is zero, use the health class's down builder method to create a health object with a status value of down. Use the with detail method to add a custom attribute to the health check response. Let's use it to return an attribute named count with a value of zero. Finally, invoke the build method to tell the builder to create the health object instance. Finally, if the collection of greetings has at least one member, we use the builder method up to construct the response. Let's run the application once again to see the custom health indicator in action. Type MVN Spring Boot Run and press enter to start the embedded Apache Tomcat web server. Let's test the health check service. Remember that it's mapped to the slash actuator slash status context path. Notice that the response JSON now contains a section named greeting. In that section, the custom count attribute shows that we have two greeting entities in our database, and therefore the status is up. Next, let's discuss how to return a customized response from the info endpoint. The actuator info endpoint returns application identification and descriptive information. The JSON object returned may be structured any way that you wish. The structure and content are driven by the properties prefixed with info and a period. Let's update the application so that the info endpoint returns information from the Maven POM file. In the source main resources config directory, open the application properties files. I'm going to add several properties which all begin with info. The structure of the property name following the info prefix will be translated into the JSON response, which will be seen in just a moment. Notice that some of the property values are bounded by at symbols. When your POM file extends the Spring Boot Starter Parent POM file, as ours does, Spring will automatically search the project POM file for values with these names. Let's run the application once again to see the custom info endpoint response. Type MVN Spring Boot Run and press enter to start the embedded Apache Tomcat web server. I'll use my RESTful web service client again to send a GET request to the info endpoint. Notice that the app.name and app.description properties return values in the JSON response, but the project property values are not what we expected. They were supposed to be replaced with the values from the POM file, but they were not. This is because the property value replacement occurs during the repackage Maven goal, which is not executed as a part of MVN Spring Boot Run. 
Stop the application and package it as a jar file using the MVN clean package command. Now use the Java jar command to run the application. Let's check the response from the info endpoint once again. Now it contains all of the values, even those from the POM file. Remember that MVN Spring Boot Run is only intended for local machine development. When a Spring Boot application is hosted on a server, it should be packaged as a JAR file and run using the Java JAR command. The actuator metrics endpoint returns detailed real-time application and system status information, such as system memory and load, data source connection pool utilization, and application utilization information. Counter metrics return the number of times that something has occurred. Actuator monitors all the RESTful web service endpoint responses by default. For instance, the Fetch All Greetings web service has returned a status code of 200 five times. Using the Actuator Counter Service Bean, it's possible to create and collect custom counter metrics. Open the Greeting Service Bean class. Use the auto wired annotation to inject an instance of the counter service into the bean. Next, in each public method of the greeting service beam, let's use the counter service to increment a new named counter metric each time the method is invoked. Give each metric a unique name to ensure that you're not accidentally incrementing the same metric in more than one location. By instrumenting key portions of business process flows in an application, the actuator metric endpoint returns application load information. Let's run the application once again to see the custom counter metrics. Open a terminal window and use the MVN Spring Boot Run command once again to start the Apache Tomcat web server. First, I'll run the greeting web services a few times. Remember our counter service is injected into the greeting service beam. By running these web services, the counter service will gather our new metrics. Now, let's look at the metrics endpoint response. Notice the new counter metrics for the greeting service. Now imagine that you instrument the significant methods of your application using the counter service. The metrics endpoint becomes an important tool for determining the most utilized portions of your application, potentially identifying bottlenecks. In this video, we have glimpsed the power of the Spring Boot Actuator component. We've learned how to tailor actuator features to our application. There are many more ways to customize actuator than what's been shown in this video. Be sure to read the Production Ready Features section of the Spring Boot Reference Guide for more information. I hope you've enjoyed this video. 
Subscribe to the Lean Stacks YouTube channel and follow the Lean Stacks Google Plus page to receive updates as new videos are published. As always, you can find more information on leanstacks.com. To view the complete repository illustrated in this video, see the GitHub repository URL in this video's description.